The idea of a tomb of the unknown warrior was first conceived in 1916 by the Reverend David Railton, who while serving as an army chaplain on the Western Front had seen a grave marked by a rough cross, which bore the pencil written legend, an unknown British soldier. He wrote to the Dean of Westminster in 1920, proposing that an unidentified British soldier from the battlefields in France be buried with due ceremony in Westminster Abbey amongst kings to represent the many hundreds of thousands of empire dead. The idea was strongly supported by the Dean and by the Prime Minister, David Lloyd George. Suitable remains were exhumed from various battlefields and brought to a chapel in France on the night of the 7th of November 1920. The bodies were received by the Reverend George Kendall, OBE, Brigadier L.J. Watt and Lieutenant Colonel E.A.S. Gell of the Directorate of Graves Registration and Inquiries went into the chapel alone. The remains were placed in four plain coffins, each covered by Union flags. The two officers did not know from which battlefield any individual had come from. Brigadier Watt, with closed eyes, rested his hands on one of the coffins. The following morning, two undertakers placed the coffin into a casket of the Oak of Timbers of Trees from Hampton Court Palace. The casket was banded with iron and a medieval crusader's sword chosen by George V personally and surmounted by an iron shield bearing the inscription, a British warrior who fell in the Great War, 1914-1918, for king and country. The casket was then placed onto a French military wagon drawn by six black horses. The mile-long procession, led by 1,000 local school children and escorted by a division of French troops, made its way down to a harbour in France. At the quayside, Marshal Falk saluted the casket before it was carried up the gangway of the destroyer HMS Verdun and piped aboard with the Admiral's call. The Verdun slipped anchor just before noon and was joined by an escort of six battleships. As the flotilla carrying the casket closed on Dover Castle, it received a 19-gun Field Marshal salute. It was landed at Dover Marine Railway Station at the Western Docks on the 10th of November. The body of the unknown warrior was taken to London. On the morning of the 11th of November 1920, the casket was placed onto a gun carriage and drawn by six horses through the immense and silent crowds. As the cortege set off, a further Field Marshal salute was fired in Hyde Park. The route followed was Hyde Park Corner, the Mall and to Whitehall where the cenotaph, a symbolic empty tomb, was unveiled by King George V. The cortege was then followed by the King, the Royal Family and Ministers of State to Westminster Abbey. The coffin was then interred in the far western end of the nave, only a few feet from the entrance, in soil brought from each of the main battlefields. Servicemen from the armed forces stood guard as tens of thousands of mourners filed silently past. The ceremony appears to have served as a form of collective of mourning on a scale not previously known. The grave was then capped with black Belgian marble stone, the only tombstone in the abbey on which it is forbidden to walk.